everybody. Now in this video, I'm gonna show you guys how to solve radical equations, but with the shortcut when it comes to factoring. So hopefully you've already watched part three video just to kind of get a little background. All right, so just like what we did before, you're trying to get rid of the square root. So I'm gonna raise both sides to the power of two. That's gonna cancel that out. And I'll bring down my seven X minus 10 over here. And then x squared is going to end up being x squared because you're basically saying x times x, which equals x squared. Since I have an x squared, I have to make this equation equal 0. But I have that 7x and minus 10 on the right side. So to get rid of it, first thing I need to do is move that 7x to the other side. But every time you move a, a term, it becomes opposite of what it is, especially when it goes over the equal sign. So the opposite of positive 7x is negative 7x x squared and negative 7x are not like terms, so I'll just write it out. Now, it still doesn't equal 0 because I still have a negative 10 over there. So to get rid of that negative 10, I have to do the opposite. So the opposite of negative 10 is adding 10. So I'm going to add 10 to both sides. Negative 7x and 10 are not like terms, so I'll just write it all the way out. So that leaves me with x squared minus 7x plus 10 equal to 0. Since I have an x squared, I have to factor this trinomial in order to get my factors and my two values for x. So, I know in the previous video, I factored using the area model, but this is strictly if you want to see what the shortcut could be. Now, this shortcut only works if your leading coefficient, in other words, the number in front of x squared is an imaginary zero. If I'm mean, imaginary one, sorry. <laughs> if it is an imaginary one, like so, the shortcut says, all you have to do is figure out what multiplies to give you the last number and adds to equal the middle number. And the two numbers that work is negative five and negative two. So since I have both of those numbers, I go ahead and write them out in factored form with x. Since my 5 is negative, it's going to say x minus 5. And since my 2 is negative, it's going to say x minus 2. By the way, if those are positive numbers, you'll put a plus sign. So then you just take each one, set it equal to 0, and solve for x. Or just simply take the opposite of, of what you see in the parentheses. So as you can see, in the parentheses, I have x minus 5. What's opposite of negative 5? A positive 5. So that's going to be my first solution. And then I have x minus 2 in the second parentheses. What's opposite of negative 2? You got it. It is positive 2. So that will be my answers. And that's it. 